How's it going everyone? I'm Adam Molina and this is Bitrate. It's a segment we do here on the studio channel where we take a thing that didn't make it to the main channel and one of us, if we're interested in it, will do a small review on it. Today I'm doing the Analog Pocket. So if the Game Boy was made in 2021 or 2022 now, this would be it. Now, disclaimer, this is gonna be a very biased review because anything that lets me play Pokemon Gold, which is objectively the best Pokemon ever, is gonna get a good review. So let's get into it. So first off, I wanna talk about the design because this thing looks sick. We talk about matte black everything here at the studio and this is matte black, except for the power button, which is this teal green color that I love. It reminds me a lot of the Pixel 4a. Accented power buttons should definitely be a thing that happen in more devices because it looks dope. On the downside, the buttons are very flush with the pocket and it's really hard to feel what you're doing when you're playing the game. And there's been multiple times where I've accidentally put it to sleep in the middle of a game or trying to raise the volume and I accidentally lower the volume, things like that. Very annoying, I wish they pushed out a bit more, but they're also very close together, which is weird. But besides that, it's fine. As far as build quality goes, this thing feels very much like an original Game Boy Color. The texture is a little different on the pocket. The pocket has like a satin kind of feel, like a matte satin-ish kind of feel, versus my old Game Boy Color is pretty like smooth and worn down. That said, I don't know how this is gonna hold up to time. I feel like in a couple of years, this could also potentially get just as smooth and worn down. But as of right now, it's great. It is a fingerprint magnet though, which I am really kind of annoyed at sometimes because it just looks terrible when you accidentally touch the screen. But that brings me to the screen, which is fucking beautiful. Um, probably gonna beep that out, but it is gorgeous. It is 10 times the resolution of the original Game Boy Color. So 1600 by 1444, which is gorgeous. Besides that, there's also buttons everywhere. So there's the regular, D-pad buttons, instead of just B and A, like on the old Game Boy Color, there's like a full, what is this called, D-pad? There's also these trigger buttons on the back, kind of like the Game Boy Advance. They are very close to the cartridge, like right here. Every time I'm like holding the game, I just feel like I'm like pushing against the cartridge just naturally. That said, I haven't had any issues with it. Playing it, I have never, not, I haven't once knocked it out. But um, yeah, still a little cause for concern. On the bottom, there's 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because yes, everything should still have that. There's USB-C charging port, which is amazing, so that you don't have to do this anymore when your batteries are running out and you just like go like that to try and get a little bit more juice out of them. I don't know if that works. I wonder if that's just me. <laughs> I feel like it works, but I've I don't know. Never done You've that. never done that? No. I used to like, every time the game would be done or like it if it would die and I'm like in the backseat of a car or something, I would just open it up and go like this. And then I would get like another like five minutes out of it for some reason, but. Don't have to do that anymore, USB-C. Another thing that I don't really like about the build quality is on the side here, there's a slot for a micro SD card, which is how you like update the device and you can add different things via the micro SD, but it is really hard to get to. Like it pops out pretty smoothly, but once you put it back in, I feel like you need to use your nails or something small just to like get it to click in. This is also a good thing, I guess, because you can't accidentally take it out, but there have been multiple times where I'm trying to get it out and I'm just sitting here like really finagling it, trying to push the button down. Besides that, everything else about this thing is pretty amazing. It is a modern Game Boy in every sense of the word, including the dock that comes separately. So it's a $99 add-on accessory that I think is totally worth it because that allows you to dock the pocket to a TV and play it kind of like a Nintendo Switch. You can attach Bluetooth controllers to the dock and then play it on a giant 8K TV if you happen to have one. But I think the real usefulness of that is for streaming. If you really want to stream, you have 1080 output that you can just capture without any doohickeys and crazy setup. Like it's built into the dock, which is really cool. So I think the biggest hardware improvement besides the screen, which perfectly scales up the game's 10X resolution, is the speakers, which sound amazing on this thing. Like, let me just show you. It gets so loud. What? <laughs> it gets very loud. It's very fun to play. Um, 
it, it's just very immersive. Like the giant screen with the giant speakers, it's, it's just great, I love it. Although I would hate anyone that plays this on the subway, so don't do that. On the bottom, you can attach a link cable so you can trade Pokemon if you want with other pockets or even older Game Boys, which is really cool. It's like backwards compatible in that way. But the cool thing about this device, as opposed to emulators, is this doesn't actually emulate. It actually has an FGPA chip inside, which is a hardware chip that runs the cartridge. So if your cartridge has an issue, like we were trying to play my old Pokemon Blue game, which never worked on my old Game Boy, something happened with it, it broke. But that cartridge also doesn't work in the pocket because the cartridge is broken. It's a hardware thing, not software, which also Analog really wants to make clear that this isn't just emulating games, it's actually playing them, which is really cool. You can play all Game Boy Pocket games, Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance games, whatever, if that's what you're into. So battery life on this thing on the website, they claim about 10 hours. And when I was playing this, I had the screen on max brightness and the volume maxed out, and I got five hours and 10 minutes. Super not scientific, but still pretty good. And I can see how if you're not playing at max brightness or max volume, it can probably last about eight or nine hours, which is pretty great. Now, as far as playing it goes, everything runs just like the old Game Boy does. There's nothing really different about gameplay itself. So one thing that I noticed that's a little different is saving. So instead of going through the menu and saving in the game, there's no option to continue the game. You can only start a new game. The way that I've been doing it is pressing the analog button in the middle and down on the D-pad and that will do a save state or a load state. So up saves, down loads. I've done that accidentally multiple times where I meant to save a game and I accidentally loaded right back to where I was previously. And that is not fun. So definitely get used to that little shortcut. So if you wanna get yourself an analog pocket, there are two things that you need to know. One is the price, two is the availability. This thing starts at 219 USD, so it's not cheap. The dock itself is a separate $99 add-on, a little bit pricey. For me, this is totally worth it because I just think that being able to play Game Boy games the way that they were actually meant to be played is really fun and I do like having a dedicated device for this. I'm also just really into random gadgets like this. So like, it's not, it doesn't make the most sense. I know there's emulators you can get on your Android phone which you can play the game just fine. But, I mean, look at this thing, it's freaking sick. <laughs> and then availability. So these are extremely hard to get. Pre-orders were what, 20, like two years ago or something like that, and they, they just started being delivered this past December. Right now, if you want a pre-order, you're gonna be in group C, which means that you'll get an analog pocket at some point in 2023. So things I like about the analog pocket, the screen, screen is amazing. The colors, the matte black teal button or the white one with the teal bluish green button, really sick. Sound is amazing, it gets very loud. Uh, USB-C, I am very excited that this is USB-C. That is really cool. I think everything should be rechargeable. I hate AA batteries and AAA batteries. Very annoying. So that is a plus. Things I don't really like about it, obviously the availability. That's a huge con for this thing because if you drop $220 right now, you're not getting this for another year, um, at least. Then there's the price itself, which is pretty expensive, 219 I think is worth it, but I'm not gonna recommend everyone go buy this thing because yeah, that's a lot of money to drop on something that you can just pick up an old Game Boy Color for $80 on eBay and play the game just fine. But overall, as far as a bitrate score, I'm gonna give it a seven out of eight just because it's so, it's so freaking cool. It's really cool. I love playing this thing. So there are two other features of the analog pocket that I didn't talk about yet. And that is the GB Studio, which is a game development studio that's built into this thing so you can make Game Boy games if you want, which is really cool. The other thing is the Nano Loop, which is a sequencer synthesizer that's built into the analog pocket and it's really cool. You can make 8-bit chiptune music, the kind that you would hear on the original Game Boy games. Let's go do that.